Hello everyone and welcome back to Kronos Plays Disco Elysium. Today, what are we doing? I think we need to go back to Everett's and be like, yo dog, uh, I opened the door and clearly didn't go in there, <laughs> like at all. Um, hmm. Yeah, alright, cool, I guess I can go do that. We do need to talk to the people in there. There might be new people around here or new comments like racist man over here. Looking for something? Oh, I know you've been giving me the run around. I guess yeah, I know you've been giving me the run around. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh first you knew Siling didn't do it. He did something. He stole his employer's goods and another lorry man's job. He should be thankful for the tip. He's been expecting this. He's really puffed himself up. And why are you smirking? Listen up, fuckwits. You don't scare me. You cops don't run Revachal West. You don't run Martinez. You don't run anything. Ah, actually we do. No. He means La Puta Madre. A legendary, and not in a good way, crime boss from Jamrock. Controls what is probably the most powerful organized crime outfit in Revachal West. Okay. Looks like the lieutenant has a plan. Let him do this. Okay. Yeah, him. Yeah, cross your arms. Then I presume you are familiar with his peonies. Yeah, they're his little bitches. He's got them all over the unions. Not just the unions. He has peonies everywhere. Some say he even has them in the RCM. Dirty fucking peonies who do anything for him. Multi-ethnic drug addicts. Say nothing! You're not peonies. You wouldn't be investigating a drug thing if you were. No, of course not. We are not peonies. But if we were, and one of Madre's drivers were to be stealing from him, then it's a good peonies job to find out who that is. Ah. It's not a hard job. It won't take a long time. It won't make Padre Madre angry. But a stupid fucking racist is standing in the way. Protecting this fucking thief. I'm not scared of you or the mob. I'm under the protection of the Loriman and Carter's guild. Eh, that's not gonna help you. You've seen that corpse in the ceramic armor there. Did his shitty little guild protect him? Nah, you wouldn't just leave him out there if you. <laughs> he tries to light a fresh sugar, but his hands are shaking now. The sentence simply ends. The lieutenant turns and gives you a barely perceptible nod. I've softened him up as best I could. Now it's on you to finish the job. Oh shit, do I have any half-light stuff? Uh, it's 50-50 shot, right? I, wait, no, I do have half-light stuff. I do, I do, I do. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Mine is half-life, oh shit. Ah, half-life. And that's it. Okay. Hi again! Sorry, I had to change my gloves. Men like this only respect two things. Strength and fear. Time to turn up the volume. Show me where her lorry is right fucking now. The ladies drive a lorry. My man, you know. Where is it? Fuck you. I told you. I'm not gonna... Oh, I'm liking this. His voice grows smaller as yours. I mean, pull Ben to your fucking lorry. I know where it is. I'm gonna burn it to the burn it down. You fucking hear me? Look, fuck you, man. It's some lorry down there, green banged up thing. I don't fucking know who she is. When did she go away? I don't know. I don't even know her name. She just rolls with the fleet and acts like a big shot. Some dyke. Oh, Jesus Christ. I haven't even seen her for days. Now it's not a big deal for him anymore. Uh, this is how he saves face. Okay, where exactly is her lorry? Past the monument, down there. The green temple. Now leave me the fuck alone, okay? A small temple by the monument. Green. Let's get into that lorry. Sure. Looks like he got his adrenaline up, too. <laughs> Good. All right, nice. I like that. Next time we break his knees, okay? Over here? I mean, we were gonna go back to Union Man, but I guess we'll uh, just do this for now. Green tempo near the monument. 
Uh, green tip here. This. This green found A to Z Contempora is parked in the shadow of the ruins looming overhead. It's seen better days. Yeah, it is very in rough shape. This must be the one he told us about, unless he was lying. Uh, how do you want to handle this? Use the pry bar to smash the window. Open it from the inside. <laughs> good idea! I don't know how good it is, but this investigation has taken long enough. We can't afford it to take any longer. I like the way you think, Kim. Uh, no, I don't want the bag in my hand. I want my cop notebook. So I can take notes. <laughs> As I bash this lorry's this window in. A to Z. Lifted weights? With a firm grip, you raise the pry bar. A glint of light catching on the tip. Call down the hammer of truth and justice. Release your secrets, Lori Cabin. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the police and then smash the window. Say welcome to the Revishall window. Welcome to Earth. And I'll just smash it. The window shatters and droplets of glass fly everywhere, shattering over the lorry floor and <laughs> And the sleeping driver inside. Sato. He says, the sticks his hand in like a common thief and opens it. The smell it. of cigarettes and perfume welcomes you. The cabin inside is plastered with old movie posters. Actresses smile from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. Hmm. I don't have that many posters. I used to have posters in when I was a teenager. Of course I had posters. Teenagers love posters. I had like a Final Fantasy 7. Oh, I had this cool Final Fantasy 7 poster that came with a strategy guide. That shit was dope. I had this like neon fucking alien one that scared the shit out of me sometimes when I woke up in the middle of the night because it glue in the dark. Uh, Pamela Anderson, of course, because I was a teenage boy. Uh, what else did I have? I had this Kingdom Heart one as well. Um, yeah, for posters these days, I have two in my room right now. I have one from a game that I worked on back in the day. Um, and then I have a signed Binding of Isaac poster that the team I managed got me once for my birthday. Actually, it wasn't for my birth. Uh, what, the, what the hell did they get me for? They got it for me for some reason. They gave me like this blue baby little doll and a poster. It really cheered me up. Oh, that was when there was a lot of... <laughs> I remember why they gave it to me. Because there was a lot of shit going on, including a lot of deaths. So they gave it to me to cheer me up. They're a very great team. I miss them. Um, my poster. These are movie posters featuring starlets from long forgotten films from the 20s, the teens, even the 90s of the last century. One of them particularly catches your eye. A centerfold of an ingenue attached right above the back seat. There's definitely perfume in the air. It's spicy with a hint of amberette. Wafting um, through the bitter hmm. air of the cabin. What's the smell? The remnants of a sweet juniper scented perfume. Probably grenade number five. Okay, study the centerfold. The actress is draped in a sheath dress, one of her shoulders bared. The sheath dress? Of an autograph run across the poster. She's looking past the camera. Sheath dress. That. Does not look like it. What? For women? Well, I don't know what makes them sheath dress. They just look like dresses to me. Probably because I don't wear them? I don't know. It's just they just all look like dresses to me. Actually, that one just looks like an ass shot, so I don't know why that one's there. But they all look like dresses to me. A feeling of tenderness washes over you. A longing, even, perhaps. And gentle tragedy. This is Tip Tijon, a starlet from the dawn of cinematography, less known for her talent than her tragic, untimely death. Uh, and that happens. She wasted away in a drug den called The Door to the River, not far from here on Boogie Street, a mixture of cocaine and morphine. She was afraid of the world and the camera, too. Well, that's real, to tell you the truth, when it comes to some actors and actresses. The actresses and the rear actor all smile you a warm goodbye. Uh, the examine radio transmitter is attached the radio. To, looks like the frequency dial is absent. It requires a key to work, but the key has been removed. 
likely by the missing lady driver. What about the baby driver? Strange. There are so many radio stations saved here. Must be over 100 at least. That is a lot. Why would anyone need so many? For contacting an entire fleet of lorrymen, for example. This is all shortwave, UW and UKV. Looks like we are dealing with an impressive organizational tool. The nerve center of a huge operation. With quite a range, too. Has anything we do with the radio? Uh, doesn't look like it. It's completely inoperable without the dial key. Okay. The smell of then the check the pedals. You wedge yourself under the steering wheel to get a better look. Seems like the few tools lying around here. A hammer, a pair of pliers, a rusty wrench have been casually thrown there by the disorganized driver. Are they in good condition? Are some of those in good condition that I can just take? But one odd detail does catch your eye. A piece of sandpaper has been glued to the throttle. Why? Sandpaper adds extra grip. Oh, clever. Sandpaper? Another technique? That is, uh, that's a clever idea. The movie stars are still smiling from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a pullout. I mean, as someone whose foot has slipped off like the gas pedal before. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. That's not a bad idea if you're having a problem with it. Cause fuck that, right? Uh, pull out the pull out toolbox. The metallic drawer slides out from the seat. It's empty, except for a folded newspaper. Uh, unfold the newspaper. It's an issue of Petit Ferique from last Wednesday. A piece of paper falls out from its pages. Pick up the note. It looks like an article ripped out from a radio enthusiast magazine. Complex mathematical equations explain the basics of something called the ULAN frequency system. Okay. The ULAN frequency system? I've never heard of that before. I know of FM, AM, UKV, but... Okay, push in the pull-out toolbox. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. I guess we're done. The nest is as it were. You close the rusty old lorry door. Great. I think we got everything. A word, detective? Okay. All right, we've finished here. Let's quickly debrief and go over what we found. So we don't do it in front of the company rep. Sure, well, <laughs> seems like something the police would do. Uh, what do you think of all this, Kim? Honestly, I'm quite worried by what we've seen so far. The evidence seems to point to a rather extensive and well-organized operation. I'm especially intrigued by that radio transmitter, particularly the sheer number of stations it can connect. Looks like this alleged drug trade casts a wide net. This means it's well-funded. Technology like that a major player must be financing it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, it's, they, I, it's, I only laugh because the way they described it, it definitely sounds like just like something I could put together in my shed by just going to a couple of, uh, you know, electronic stores. But yeah, I guess in this world, it is a little bit different. Obviously, not everyone has that sort of stuff. I'm not sure. Or the capacity to go just get it. All about. But they may hold some significance. Perhaps it's a better way to connect between fleets while avoiding frequency bleed. Or maybe it's used to tap into RCM networks. Listening in on your calls between you and your station. A worrying prospect. Yeah, especially that last one when they would not shut up about everything. Uh, what about the movie posters? As elegant as they are, I don't think they are relevant to the drug trade. Uh... Maybe the trade is cinephile, a lot of women there, especially for a lady driver's cabin. Well, she she was called a slur by the racist dude, so maybe she's in the women. Uh, wouldn't be that shocking. Uh, could the film industry be evolved? Maybe be the trade is cinephile? Yes, well. He doesn't say more. Unimportant. Unimportant, yes. Uh, how do you think it's connected to the Union? We didn't find anything conclusive linking them to the smuggling operation. But somehow, I doubt that Everard Claire would be oblivious to something like this happening right under his nose. My suggestion is, we use it against the Union in any way we can, to our own ends. It's a slippery ill, but we just might be able to pin them down, indirectly, down the road. Okay, so keep it in mind down the road, got it. Will the RCM open investigation to this? We should return to the murder case. See what Joyce tells us about the lynching. When we are done for the day, I call my station and suggest our narcotics department look into it. Fair enough. There are more than enough grounds to start an official investigation. 
Sometime later, when we're done here. We do not want to get caught in that. Uh, he stops on things. So what are you thinking? The fact that one hasn't started already gives me pause. An investigation, I mean. Especially if the Madre grouping is involved, and I can't imagine they aren't. It's certainly worrisome. Corruption? All the same, I don't like the idea of internal affairs descending on the matter. That won't help anyone either. Mm, okay, debriefing over? Debrief over. After you. Let's go back to Joyce, then. We should be at the boat, right? Oh, I'm stuck? Oh, we can't go that way. Oh, hey, officer, got a minute. Sure, I got a minute. I, uh, saw you poking around in Lady Driver's lorry. She in trouble? All right, so you did know about something about their smuggling. Nah, man. I was telling you the truth. I really didn't think it'd be her. She's okay. Sort of troubled, but still. A nice person. Yeah, well, nice people can do horrible shit. What else do you know about her? Nothing. We just talked a bit. About life and stuff. She left me a key so I can park a lawyer if the jam broke. So, is she in trouble or what? Um... Uh, sorry, man. I can't disclose the fact of... Uh, well, it's not an official investigation. How about no trouble? She's gonna be fine. Oh, man. That's like a load off my mind. All that stress was messing up my rhymes. What's the plan with those rhymes anyways? Oh, you know. Tommy Leham's gonna be a musician. Spreck song, but with beats. I've got a lot of free time on the road to hone my craft. Why Tommy Leham? Tommy Lam was taken. My real name's Jerry Lafitte. Tommy's <laughs> way better. <laughs> okay, a lot of people do grow up to not like the names. Him. Uh, alright, well, good luck with that, Tommy. Yeah, you too. Gotta go start an investigation on this lady and get her arrested one day. Maybe even hanged. Joyce, I did your thing. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Uh. Do do do. Uh, I spoke with the lawyer man at the roundabout. Yes, my eyes on the harbor have sent word to that effect. What have you discovered? Wait, where exactly are these eyes located? It doesn't really matter. And I do apologize for the surveillance. Wild pines can't afford to be blind at a time like this. Also, thank you for the level up. That's a lot of experience points. One of the tall buildings overlooking the roundabout, most likely. That would give them a read on the entire quarter. Yeah. I mean, we had eyes on the back of our head anyways. In any case, it's a relief to know someone has looked into it. If I may ask, will there be an official investigation? I assume you discovered there is an operation. She's trying to conceal her excitement. But the slight glimmer in her green eyes tells you otherwise. The lieutenant is about to interject. Cut him off. This decision should be yours. Uh... Why? Oh, I, I, okay, I mean... I am in charge of this investigation, so I guess me handling this would make sense, but... At the same time... I'm not opposed to Kim just jumping in and... Not even jumping in, just replying to her, so let the lieutenant handle it. If there is an investigation, it will be part of an ongoing operation, subject to confidentiality. I am sure you understand. Of course, detectives. In any case, you've held up your end of our arrangement. I trust you with the rest. Now it's my turn. I wouldn't normally break protocol like this, but the situation demands it. Yeah, because we if did you your thing. Solve this murder, I'm afraid we may have a bloodbath on our hands. The words bloodbath sound cold in her mouth. They taste of iron and strawberries. Right, how are the lynching and the strike connected? I have an indirect role to play, I'm sad to say. My employer experienced a momentary lapse of faith in me. In that moment, they elected to deploy a private military contractor as an insurance measure. They called it my security detail. Lapse of faith? They were dispatched after I relayed the union's initial offer. Every worker... A member of the board. I tried to convince my employer it was simply a piece of rhetoric or a joke. They did not appreciate the humor. Okay, do you need a security detail? Absolutely not. These mercenaries are muscle, pure and simple. They are meant to intimidate the union. Didn't good, do a good job. Who are they, exactly? Cronell. An Oranese military company. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, three arrived in Martinez. They report to me sporadically, but 
They do not answer to me. To be frank, our relationship is deteriorating. Well, we already knew the name because we talked to Alice earlier about the armor numbers. They wear ceramic armor. Yeah. Have semi-automatic weapons. Nice. Years of combat experience. Even better. They also have trauma and stressor disorder, and no <laughs> idea how to conduct themselves <laughs> in an urban. <laughs> That's not a good combination. So what happened? The story is, one of them, the Colonel. I don't know his real name, sexually assaulted a local woman while he was drunk and separated from his unit. This allowed some of the more militant Union members to subdue him. He was taken out behind the whirling in rags and lynched last Sunday night. Okay, so we turn a blind eye to the lynching. Nothing. Mr. Clare refuses to let me into the harbor. I have not been able to discuss this matter with anyone there. The remaining two Cronell contractors carry out their orders. For now. Remaining two. Okay. It's a smokescreen. That's one each, in Kim. Secret, they are conducting an independent military tribunal into the lynching. Once this investigation is concluded, executions will follow. What is the nature of this so-called investigation? Whether to execute one, some, or all of the Union militants. It will be all of them. The decision is already made. Yeah. <sighs> uh, that's not good. It's not good. No. My only hope is that you provide a single concrete suspect before the mercenaries indiscriminately pick theirs. Simply put, if you don't pin this on someone good and do it fast, they will identify and execute everyone present at the lynching. This in turn will force the Union to respond. They would have to. To project strength and power. Yeah, you can't really let that go. At the same time, uh, I'm surprised the Union hasn't already reinforced their militant people with more stuff to help take on the two mercenaries, right? Now, I get the mercenaries are heavily equipped with armor and weaponry that... Probably aren't easily accessible to people. I would imagine the Union might be able to get more of it, though. Or at least something close enough to it. The Debarder have over 2,000 men. It will be a thousand to one. Have you ever seen a Hornet invade a beehive, Lieutenant? It's not pretty. The Serai's giant Hornet, the world's second largest insect, can kill 40 honeybees a minute, while a group of 30 can decimate an entire hive of 20,000 bees in less than four hours. I hate everything about that sentence, paragraph you just said. These men work in tandem using semi and fully automatic firearms. Their armor is virtually impenetrable to muzzle-loaded weapons, even yours. Most Union workers don't have guns at all. What about gas? As I said, a bloodbath. Uh, I can't see this happen. Too many things would have to go wrong first. Feels like a lot of things have already gone wrong. Isn't this a pretty bleak scenario you're describing? <sighs> I mean, a lot of things would have to go wrong first. But, okay. Fair enough. Couldn't they just drive a truck into them? <laughs> or something? They got armored vehicles, but maybe the, the, the assault weapons are armor penetrating. I think they have armored vehicles. Maybe I... No. They don't. I'm thinking of something else. It's not even this game. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, I can't see that happening. Too many things have already gone wrong. That's what I just said. Are Maybe you listening to me? Badgeless detective of the citizens militia. All we can do is keep that which is not from following suit. One single concrete suspect delivered into civil court, and I may be able to defuse this situation. Uh, you said the deceased assaulted a woman. Or he didn't. This is information passed on to me from some teenagers loitering around the canal. I cannot testify by Who it. did the passing on that? The remaining contractors. Their tribunal. What did the teenagers the by the canal say? That the man was killed because he assaulted a local woman. I've asked around a bit. This seems to be the accepted story around Martinez. Okay. The lieutenant consults his notebook, his eyebrows knitted in concentration. Odd. We haven't heard any reports about an assault in connection with the lynching. Okay, so maybe the assault didn't happen. Last Sunday night, 
at the whirling in rags, the hostel by the gates. Supposedly, the colonel was drunk, maybe on narcotics, too. Shit, I hope this wasn't me. Either way, he's alleged to have sexually assaulted a woman. Sometime later, a group of dock workers got their hands on him. And who was this woman? That's a good question, officer. I don't have the slightest idea. As I said, it's a rumor about a rumor. In any case, it's what the colonel's remaining colleagues believe. You meet her soon enough, you feel. Okay. Um, this colonel, the one who was hanged, do you know him? If you mean did I see him alive, yes. But I did not know him. You don't know how you know. It's not written on her face, nor in her voice. But she had sympathy for this man. You liked him. Liked is a bit strong. He... He was the most charismatic among them. He handled all the talking. His departure left a major gap in the group's communication skills. Okay, his name? Lely. His service name. A nom de guerre, most likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. A bad sign if there ever was one. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the others first. One is a man. Corty, they call him. A nickname as well. The other a woman. Phyllis DePaul. Corty is the gunner, I believe. DePaul is a radio operator. What would you say was his eye color? The deceased. She closes her eyes, trying to picture the man's face. Then shakes her head. I can't remember. There's a pang of regret in her voice. The Aww. lieutenant was testing her, asking a small detail first to see if she knew him better than she let on. She passed. That's all right, man. Anything else? Nationality? What would you say was his age? He was 40. Or 50. It's hard to say which. He had a combat injury on his lower jaw. It made it difficult to estimate his age. Or gauge his spatial expressions. Indeed. This matches the dental reconstruction we saw on the body. What else? Nationality? Accent? He was, uh, Occidental, I think. Like brown Occidental. Hair. A mixed accent, Oranese, or Messinian, maybe. His injury gave him an accent all his own. I don't think, have we heard of Occidental yet? In a way, it was humanizing. He had to learn to speak through it, through the injury. That's all I know, I guess. I only met him once. Uh, where are the two other mercs? They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking them out. For one, they're almost certainly armed to the teeth. They don't have the same respect for the Revachol citizens' militia as I do. To put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes. Ghetto savages. It will not be a fruitful meeting. Mm, we should get some gas, because I'm pretty sure their armor won't protect them against vigilantes. that. Vigilantes. You're a professional officer of the only legitimate authority in Revachol. Like, vigilantes? RCM is the authority from the Coalition. Where does their come from? Somehow, I doubt that lecturing them on the legitimate use of force will persuade them to stand down. The world's most what? Oh, does the new Steam Overlay not get captured? I just got an achievement, I think. I got a little thing that popped up at the bottom of the screen. But I don't think OBS caught it. Then There is a new Steam, like overlay or they changed the way steam looked recently huh okay oh that sucks i wonder if there's a way around that obs probably just needs to be updated eventually do it but i'll double check later uh we still need to know where they are okay uh we still need to know where they are We're likely to run into them eventually when that happens i'll be in a better position to meet where are people. they one is obviously the scab leader at the harbor gates. Okay. The one chanting the idiotic slogans. He's barely maintaining his disguise. The other has a vantage point in a building south of the roundabout. They were keeping tabs on you while you were canvassing the lorry drivers. Okay, so one must be the goon in the ill-fitting working clothes. That may be so. I still hope you heed my advice. There's no need to kick the hornet's nest. I already kicked one of them. For all your talk of averting this catastrophe, the situation at the gate is a border keg. This is not bothering Well, not the mercs, but the other racist dude. Of course it bothers me, Lieutenant. But my hands are tied. 
How would my employer react if it appeared I were intervening on behalf of the Union? Your concern may be appearances. Ours is keeping the peace. Uh, one is probably in the building overlooking the roundabout. It would afford a good vantage point. In any case, it's practically inaccessible. Where is your radio for contacting them, if I may ask? Do you have an earpiece? Heavens no. I'm not an undercover agent. There's a short wave at the ship's wheel. Okay, another question I for you. I can answer it better. Uh, what can you tell them about the colonel? Not much. Their public resume is relatively good, as far as private military contractors go. I believe they were once called Downwell. Down a deep black well. They boast a long list of clients. Saint-Baptiste, Welchman Lorenz, Eendracht. A warning sign, however. The operations concerned all take place in third or fourth world countries. Guarding facilities, hmm. escort missions and such. Okay. Meaning they're used to operating in war zones. Yes. All the good conflict corridors. Supramundi, Yesut, the Seminese Islands. Countries that don't have a good record reporting atrocious military conduct on their soil. Right. Uh, okay, anything else going on? Sadly, no. Before this happened, I had little interest in them. Now that I do, I don't have the resources. If you still have access to the ICP's database, you could run a better background check than I ever could. It may take some time, though. Well, I already have Alice working on it. Do you know a lot about the inner workings of the RCM and the ICP, ma'am? In my line of work, it pays to do your research. I was prepared to deal with the RCM. I did not think I would be dealing with a group like Cronell. Could you contact the company and tell them to call it off? I have. And they will. However, these orders take time to reach what is basically a rogue unit out in the field here. Until they do, it's all on us. Alright, how much time do we have? Until the executions start. Truthfully, I don't know. It depends on their progress identifying the members of the lynch mob and their impatience. They don't report their progress to you? Not on this matter. I'm afraid they consider this a personal initiative. Five days, not more. Maybe sooner. Five days from now or five days from when the lynching happened because it's already been a week. It's a matter of days, not weeks. Oh, uh, yeah, what was that about a bloodbath? Yes. I'm afraid this strike may descend into a small scale civil war with possible consequences for all of Rivershall West. Since you are sharing, man. This is also the RCM's worst-case scenario. Then we're on the same page. As grim as it may be. Coolio, that's enough for now? I am sorry to have been the bearer of bad news. If uh, there is anything else yeah. I can help you with, please ask. What do you think of these tats? She reaches for the photo, takes it, then holds it in her hand. For about half a minute, in silence. Lady, you're wasting time. It was taken with a trigger not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. Stay quiet. Observe the woman's expression. Her mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo's surface. She has no excess of emotions for this cadaver. Has she seen dead bodies before? It's likely. Well, what do you think? Uh, sorry. I was trying to see if I can read the web of interdependencies between these points. The stars. I can't. But that's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters, numbers, anything. Their size, location on the body, and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Like blooms in a pattern. Close. Port cities. This is an Oranese map of the waterways, a sailor's tattoo worn by wayfarers of the Dolorian century, over 300 years ago. The sailors would mark their bodies to map their travels. Okay, what use is... Uh, what is the use of this map? The sailor's soul would use it to fly back home. I mean, I guess it's a handy way to always keep a map on this you, I guess. Contraption. To be reeled back in by. The silver cord, they would call it. Well, it wouldn't be much use of you unless you had a mirror, I guess, yeah? And the tattoo was designed to be reflected correctly in a mirror? Where is he now? This one has flown quite far by now. I would say he's near the Arcade Islands by now. 
ready to exit the Insulindian and into the Pale, if I've read his home address correctly. What travels did the dead man make? Quite a few. Vredefort, the Oranese capital, traditionally stands on the right shoulder. He started somewhere near here, I think. What next? Then he made his way to the Preto Grangi, through what I think must be the Stutz Canal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Preto, he sailed to the Insulindic Ocean, first the Semenese Islands, then this. Revachol. Those are the two constants. Vredefort on the shoulder, and Revachol in the heart. They started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulinde, at the dawn of the Inter-Islary Age. You said you can't read it. I can't understand what's going on. I can't. <laughs> this man was no sailor, and these are no ports. I can understand geographic fragments, but not their meaning. Somewhere in an office lit by a single green desk lamp, Captain Ptolemyus Price, 58, bald and bespeckled, is writing in a ledger on his desk. Rows and rows of days and weeks. Have we met this person? Remarks in a single column. Patrol, case, vacation, injured. In Martinez, looking into Crenel, he writes in one. Then the man puts down his pen and rubs his temples with both hands. Outside, there is a siren. Distant gunshots on the streets of the Jamrock Quarter. This man has no brother of mine, but this is his service history. That makes sense to me. We have no more use for a map of the waterways. Just like we don't need sailors the way we used to. This is what the custom would morph yeah. into on the Occident. I mean, that's very true in reality sense. So many different things, you know, you don't travel by the stars anymore. I'm assuming it's still good to learn that sort of stuff if you're, like, in the Navy or something like that. Because what if your shit gets broken, your GPS or your map or whatever, and you need to find a way back, right? Uh, who could tell me more? His platoon members? The other contractors. Though I do not suggest you go and show them that picture. This man was their friend and comrade. Okay. It could go this or the other way. Maybe if you're tactful, it could be beneficial. Right. Surely there are other people to ask about the tattoo. This is not necessary to complete the task, officer. It's a dangerous side task. Search elsewhere. Sure. Challenge accepted. <laughs> I say we do it. Um, you're right, not a good idea. I need information, mark it down, ask Mercy about tattoo. Uh honestly we should. I don't know if we need to show them the picture though. Do what you have to do, detective. I don't think deciphering that tattoo should come before public security. But if you should wade into the mob to find out, I couldn't stop you. No, that's true. Be careful with that. Maybe. That's all for the tattoo, thank you. Is there anything else I can help you with? Um, yeah, but I think we'll do that next time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all then. Have a great day. Bye.